As we begin to talk about functions, there's an important concept we must make sure we cover, and that's the idea of domain. Domain is all the possible inputs. If I can spell input, inputs of a function. Usually these are represented by the variable x, and so the idea is, um, kind of visually what we're doing is you've got this function machine, f of x, and let's say you try and put 2 in. Yeah, that worked. We got 3 out. We could put a small circle in, and let's say we get a small square out. But could we put an entire house into the function machine? Now, you might notice it doesn't quite fit in the hole. It's too big. It doesn't fit. The house, then, would be excluded because it's too big to fit inside that function machine. It's only got a hole that's so big, it can only take so much in. So that's what we're kind of getting at here, is the domain is, what are we allowed to put in? What fits in the function machine? Well, sometimes it's easier to say, well, what doesn't fit? in the function machine. What isn't a possible input? And we've seen two types of functions so far in our study of algebra that we need to be aware of. The first is fractions. One thing doesn't fit with a fraction. One thing doesn't work with a fraction. And that is with fractions, we're not allowed to have 0 in the denominator. Remember, if 0 is in the denominator of a fraction, it becomes undefined. We can't divide by 0. No 0 in the denominator. So that's one thing that doesn't fit. Another thing that doesn't fit is from our even radicals. You'll remember with even radicals, if we had a negative number under a radical, the square root of negative 1 was i, an imaginary complex number. And with, with functions, we're mainly interested in real numbers. And so with even radicals, we'll say we don't want to go with complex numbers. We want to say there are no negatives with an even radical, because it won't fit in the function machine. It doesn't work in the domain. So when we're asked to find the domain of f of x equals 3 times the fourth root of 2x minus 6 plus 4, the part that becomes interesting to us is the part that puts a restriction on what fits in the function machine. And that is the even radical. What is inside the even radical cannot be negative. So what we'll do is we'll just focus on this part. We're just looking for domain here. That's the key word, domain. This 2x minus 6 can't be negative, which means it must be bigger than or equal to 0. Because if it goes smaller than 0, we're now negative, and it won't fit in the function. Well, we can solve this real quick by adding 6 to both sides. 2x is greater than or equal to 6, and then finally dividing both sides by 2. We find out x is greater than or equal to 3. This then becomes our domain. What this is saying is we can put any number into this function that's greater than or equal to 3, and the function will work out. But if we try and force a number that's smaller than 3, maybe negative 7, it won't fit in the function machine. It'll become undefined with the real numbers. That's what we're looking for with domain, what fits in the function. How about example 2? If g of x is equal to 3 times the absolute value of 2x plus 7 squared minus 4, what's the domain here? Well, what's interesting is we don't see any of those things we were warned about, if you will. There's no even radicals. There's no fractions. It's just a whole bunch of operations. And if you think about the operations, there's no limitation on the operation. First, we multiply by 2. Well, you can multiply anything by 2. Then we add 7. Well, you can add 7 to anything. Then we take the absolute value. Well, we can take the absolute value of anything. Then we square. Well, you can square anything. Then we multiply by 3. You can multiply any number by 3. And then we subtract 4. We can subtract 4 from anything. 
there's really no limitations on this function. Really, this is an anything goes function. Any value for x will give you a real solution. And so we say that there is any real number or all real numbers is the domain. There's no number that doesn't fit. It's a one size fits all function. Let's try another example. Here we're asked to find the domain of h of x, which is x minus 1 over x squared minus x minus 2. And again with domain, we're interested in what doesn't work, what's not allowed to happen. And you notice we have a fraction. What's not allowed to happen with a fraction is the denominator cannot be 0 because then it would be undefined. It won't fit in the function machine. So we want to know when x squared minus x minus 2 is 0 because we know it cannot be equal to 0. Well, we've solved equations like this before. We know when there's an x squared in the function, we need to factor it and set each factor equal to 0. We can see we need to multiply to negative 2 and add to negative 1. This only works because there's a 1 in front of the x squared. That's going to work with x minus 2 and x plus 1. Then we set each factor equal to 0. x minus 2 is, well, not equal to 0. And x plus 1 is not equal to 0. And we can quickly solve by adding 2. x is not equal to 2. And subtracting 1, x is not equal to negative 1. We'll probably just list the numbers and say x is not equal to negative 1 or 2. What this is saying for the domain, any number fits into this function. Any number can be plugged in except for negative 1 and 2. They're the wrong size. They don't fit.